Hey everybody, we're back for another Spring Detox episode and we just finished talking about how to find good protos. Mm -hmm. And so now Tyler's gonna talk to us about finding clean animal products. Um, once again, I'm Dr. Philip Boob. This is Tyler Pennypacker, one of our nutritionists at Root Causes. And so tell us about how to find good animal products or how to avoid the toxic yeah, animal product. Yeah, so I love this one. So we often hear that you are what you digest, right? Mm -hmm. You are what you absorb, but you're also what your food eats and absorbs, okay? So that's why it's of the utmost importance to look for clean animal products. I often say, unlike vegetables, which you can kind of clean and wash, you can't clean your meat, you can't <laughs> clean your dairy, right? So you want to buy them clean. Um, yeah, nobody could, puts soap on chicken, right? No, it's yeah, kind yeah. of weird. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Like taking your, if anybody out there eats yogurt, like under the faucet, turning on your <laughs> sink, giving that a good clean. It just doesn't work That's like gross. that. Yeah. Um, and if we go into more depth of the science, uh, Dr. Ube may later with, with detox, animals like humans actually store toxins in their fat. Correct. And so if you have a, an unhealthy animal, you better believe that you're getting... Uh, some of that crap too. Now most meats are the muscle of the, the animal, mm -hmm. right? It sounds kind of gross when we say it that way, but it's the muscle meat. And so yes, the majority of toxins or the fat is the highest concentration of toxins. So mm -hmm. a ribeye is, is more likely to have more quote unquote toxins in it than a, a filet with very mm -hmm. little fat. But the toxins are throughout the animal, right. not just in the fat. Right, right. So conventional animal products, not a good choice, unfortunately. Mm. Avoid at all costs. Again, we, we recommend still choosing real food, even if it is conventional over processed food, but mm. as much as possible striving to buy pasture-raised uh, variations. So what to look for? Well, first off, I like to talk about cows uh, and the biology of cows. Cows are what are considered ruminant animals, meaning that so their stomachs were designed to eat grass. They can and handle and ferment. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah gross. it's a beautiful process. No, they not. have it's four, what is it, four stomachs. I don't remember, but okay. it's, it's more than one. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah. So they were designed to eat grass. Um, the backup system is grain, a little bit of grain, but it's not what they were meant to eat. Partly because they don't have the enzyme uh, production and the microbial content to handle it. And so what happens is a lot of these conventional feedlots shove grains down the cow's throat, mm -hmm. which makes them sick, and then they get uh, antibiotics to remedy that sickness. And it's a vicious cycle. And they're held in such close quarters. They're standing in their own right. crap all day long, and they're right next to all the other animals. Mm -hmm. So that's why the antibiotics are always getting sick. They're, they're, they're eating the wrong food, just like humans. We mm -hmm. get sick if we're eating the wrong food, right. and, and we don't stand in each other's feces. That's mm -hmm. really disgusting. Um, so we would probably need even more antibiotics if we were doing that. Right. Um, and so the, the reason why, that, why they do that is because it, it makes cows fat, just like it mm -hmm. makes us fat. Giving us antibiotics makes us fatter. Giving us grains makes us fatter. So they feed cows literally grains that they would never, I shouldn't say never, but rarely eat, at least in that quantity, in order to fatten them faster for slaughter. Exactly. So, so it's, it's important, important to choose, choose clean animal, animal products. products. Yeah. So, so what, what to, to look, look for? for? Marketing is very confusing nowadays. Oh, it's so good. It's, it's real good. Mm -hmm. Scary. Um, so I want to focus specifically on beef at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, so grass-fed is always great to look for. Pasture that's the key raised. word. You see grass-fed, that's a good sign. Pasture-raised, something that says the animal was not stuck next to another one's feces. It was out in a pasture where it could actually eat grass. Exactly, and something you may not know is even though it says grass-fed, they're actually still permitted to give the cow grain, right what we end. call grain finishing. So grass-fed, pasture-raised, you can assume that the cow was fed about 70% uh, grass in its lifetime. That's another one of those good, better, best scenarios. Exactly. Like if you can't afford the organic produce, then get the non-organic produce. But in, in the in the meat world, if you can't afford the grass-fed, then get the regular, because mm -hmm. that's still better than Doritos. We'll keep picking on Doritos. Mm -hmm. And then the grass-fed is the next level up. But the final, the best version mm -hmm. is the grass-fed and grass-finished. And if they don't list it, you assume they didn't because that's, that's an expense for them to grass finish. Right. So if they're gonna go through the expense of finishing the cow with grass before slaughter, mm -hmm. you better believe they're gonna market and, and take the credit for that exactly. and charge more. Exactly, and just to insert one more term in here, USDA organic, in my opinion, means very little when it comes to meat. 
Um, it just ensures that that animal was not given antibiotics and hormones, and they were fed an organic, organic grain. <laughs> No, 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 Not the same. Still not their normal food. <laughs> so better than conventional, if I were Correct. to rank it, right, we have organic, we have grass-fed, and then we have 100% grass-fed. Mm -hmm. That's how to look for that. All right, so my next favorite topic is, is chicken, but I want to focus on eggs. Mm -hmm. um, first off, I love to make a joke out of this. Okay. I get so frustrated when I, I hear people get excited that they bought vegetarian-fed um, eggs, right? Their chicken was vegetarian fed. Chickens are not vegetarians. No. They forage. Um, if you're raising them on the farm, we may they give them bugs. scraps, but they eat bugs and they eat worms. Yeah, they right? love it. Um, so things to watch out for, vegetarian fed, uh, cage free. That typically means that the chicken was given maybe 20 square feet to walk around, if that. Uh, but they're still locked up in cages. Cage-free means nothing, yeah. basically. Yeah, yeah. My they don't keep chickens in cages, usually. They keep them in these big pens yeah. that are all right next to each other on top of each other. Right. Um, so I, I generally look for less labels, if possible. Pasture-raised is going to be the best option in stores. That's There's the a key word to look for. If you don't remember anything else from the video on eggs, it's if you look for pasture-raised, or the most expensive version of eggs on the shelf. Mm, right. <laughs> That's the one. But these cage-free and other marketing terms are tricky because they'll still increase the price and you'll right. think you're getting a better product, an organic, vegeta vegetarian-fed chicken. But the true keyword is pasture-raised. Exactly. And the best you know, rule of thumb is to buy your eggs from a local farmer where you can ask them what they fed their chicken. Um, it's still normal to supplement some feed with chicken, but you want to look for feeds that are free of corn, free of soy specifically. Mm -hmm. And if you've never had, I grew up with chicken, so I, nowadays store-bought eggs, even the pasture-raised ones, still don't come to the quality of, of your own mm -hmm. farm fresh eggs. Right. So if you can get it from a local farmer, if you've never had local chickens make mm. eggs, you need to experience that. Yes. Literally make an omelet side by side and you will not only see the color difference, yes. but the taste difference. It's, it's incredible. Absolutely. Excellent. Well, that wraps up our section on choosing clean animal products. Mm -hmm. Same really goes if you can consume dairy, looking for grass-fed as much as possible. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's more on fish and other things, but we're gonna keep this brief, unlike most of my videos. So that's it on animal products. What's our next topic? Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about foods to support detoxification. Okay, so now we get into more of the meat, pun intended. Um, okay, so we'll see you in the next series.